now. So we're actually jumping into losers, which is actually really nice because I feel like no Three, losers matches ever get time on stream unless one. you're super late in the bracket. Yeah, exactly. But once again, we're going to start with the Yoshi, of course. This is the best, I think, what Kloon could do versus Zelda here. Mm -hmm. Now, Silvira is already showing off some Zelda tech. That, when you put Phantom actually in front of you or like kind of inside your hitbox, that's actually called the Displace Phantom. Okay. Normally, Zelda will place Phantom in front of her, which makes it really annoying to deal with projectiles. So the reason why, you know, Kloon may not be throwing eggs too much. But when you put Phantom right in front of you, uh, it doesn't even matter because Phantom is so big that Zelda kind of fits herself inside of the shell that even if a projectile hits you, the Phantom won't break. So that's Displaced Phantom for you all. That's a little bit of Zelda knowledge. So far, pretty close up between both players. I actually think this stage is pretty good for Zelda, especially versus Yoshi, because she's going to want to KO you with that elevator going up. Yeah, the middle platform and Smash Shell just makes it really easy for you to catch people over committing, I guess, because a, a lot of people just want to throw aerials off of platforms. And, you know, one center one, very, very easy to out of shield there. Great knowledge by Silvera. It's getting an early stock lead here. Yeah, for sure. Once again, I feel like not a lot of people know that Zelda's out of shield options are actually really solid. That up B or the uh, Ferrari's win will actually KO you pretty early, especially if Zelda has rage. I disagree with actually the roll in. I actually felt like that was a free grab. But yeah. I feel like Silvera is going for, of course, that up air. And the up air actually has a couple of uh, hitboxes in it. There's a weak hit up the up air, and then there's a strong hit. But oh my god, Silvera yeah. is just going to elevate he's just, again. He's just catching Kloon looking for the kill is the thing. It's like Kloon really, really just wants to take care of this stock. And he's not like respecting the fact that Silvera can just... Uh, or just get shield broken. Yep. He, he wasn't really respecting too much that Silverus can just throw like retreating stuff up to stuff it out. And, and he just took, got a lot of mileage off of that. Yeah, for sure. But of course, Silverus sitting at an amazingly large lead. I feel like Kloon is definitely getting mixed up by the Displaced Phantom. I feel like there's no real game plan around it. I feel like it's just kind of like, I don't know what to do here, so I might as well just wait. Mm -hmm. But that's the worst thing you can do. The, what you want to do versus Zelda is really overwhelm her. She's one of those zoners where she has a very obvious flow chart and you do not want to let her get into that flow chart because it's so hard once she gets advantage to get her out of it. Nice up, up ah. tilt into up air. There was no DI there on was, that one. Yeah. Zero. A, a negative oh. amounts of DI on that one for sure. <laughs> yeah, make sure you hold down and in, everybody, by the way. Down and in. All right. Down and you in. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, let's let's look at this one. Yeah, so the Phantom comes out. Once again, Kloon just doesn't really know what to do here. Going to try and land with the Nair, expecting like a roll in or an aggressive option. Weak hit fair up tilt. And then wow, the late hit of up tilt covering this the spot This is not dodge. even the strong hit. Wow, ew. Yeah, that's not even the strong hit. That was how much pre-hit? Yeah. So the strong hit's like here. Ooh. Okay. Hold on, I got it. Oh, wait, I turned off my pen. I'm working on it, Devin. I'm sorry about the best. The strong hit's like in the center. Kloon is like right here. Oh, what? Yeah, the strong hit is literally oh, in the palm God. of her hand, and Kloon is literally to the left. Yeah, and he's going straight up. Yep. So that was bad DI. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Game two going in. Going to the Wario. Probably still like, still Smashville. I was going to say, yeah, War Wario and Smashville is not terrible. I, I feel like he would want to play a little bit Ooh. slower against Silveris because Silveris looks comfortable running in right now, just yeah. straight up. This is the type of Zelda gameplay that I actually really love because you can just play so aggressive. But I do feel like Wario does have a little bit more juggles. What we're seeing now on Kloon is what we weren't seeing before. All these up airs, I feel like. Yoshi up air and Wario up air are so similar in that regard, but now Kloon gonna actually take a little bit of a uh, little bit of a percentage lead at this point. And we have the edge guard, but nothing home quite yet. Just not that comfortable right now. Yeah, Ooh. and wow, what a find by Silveris. Kloon luckily still has his bike and his jump, so he should be able to make it back here. What a deep recovery! <laughs> but Silveris barely not gonna be getting the edge guard. And this is a really tight game, too. This is a very aggressively tight game, too. Getting the two frame on, on the Zelda recovery. And now we see Kloon with the stock lead. Yeah, definitely a pain in the butt, that two frame. But of course, what, what else is a pain in the butt <laughs> is that back air. And of course, so, so strong. These up tilts placed by Silverus are so, so well placed as well. But speaking of up tilts, we also know that Kloon has an up tilt of their own. Not flashing yellow quite yet, but Waft versus Zelda, not exactly the best time that you want to have. Going for the bite there. Probably meant to be reversed at that point, but now Silverus has to watch out. Some of these upbees, there's a lot of ending lag in Ferrari's win. Got to be careful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Kloon's just starting to get a little bit more comfortable in advantage state. He's not really trying to, like, finish his food. He's, he's understanding that, yeah, Silverus is playing aggressive Zelda, but he's playing aggressive Zelda. Like, yes. it's, it's Zelda at the end of the day. It's like, if he waits for that, he has the back airs, he has the up tilts, he has the know-how to get the job done. 
He just needs to wait for Zilveris to take his turn first. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, strong hit down here. Not going to be able to connect there either. Great parry by Zilveris. But unfortunately, once again, we were talking about this. Ferrari's win, when the second hit doesn't hit, it's very punishable. Here comes Bite, though. Kluin looking so much more comfortable. The Nair is going to be able to be poked out here, and Silvira's going to opt to just stay behind Phantom, which is a great kind of plan, especially when you're this far behind. But of course, down tilt fair, super strong. Great air dodge deal by Kluin through. Yeah, and this is looking pretty good for Silveris. No, luckily for Kluin, going to be DIing that right, so not dying off the side there. Okay. Oh, really phenomenal catch. And we're reaching full off range. I think at around 40 seconds from now, Kloon will have that. So even if he loses a stock here, that's a whole other stock that Silverius has to kind of get through. Ooh. Wow, what a find with the kick. Getting the forward air. Going to be sealing it uh, to even stocks. And this is really good. I but love the way that Silverius is, like, the punish game is really what's winning them so far in all of neutral. Every unsafe option is met with a back air. Every unsafe option is met with an up tilt into a combo. Like, it's so smart by Silverius. I actually feel like Kloon doesn't really know how to approach at this point. Obviously going for kind of the Wario, you know, special with the up tilt. Ooh, but... What a risky walk. Yeah, the walk actually went on the Phantom there, which is why it didn't work, but it doesn't even seem to matter. That oh. Wario back air, especially on Smashville, is going to KO you super, super early. Yeah, great knowledge by Kloon there. A lot of players, if we can get a replay on that, love to jump in that range. Yep. It, it's just that area like that's just right off the stage where you just kind of like... Well, we'll get to it a little bit. <laughs> Down We're this working. This kind of area, yeah, yeah. Right before he gets back here, there is just a really, really big scramble spot yeah. where a lot of players just really want to just jump back on stage and yeah. try and land. And Kloon, that's why he just goes right for the rising back airs, because he's like, I know that you want to get around me. Yeah. I know you want to reset back to neutral. I know you don't want to take the ledge versus Wario, because you have down tilt, you have dash attack, you yep. have back air. So much onslaught of aerials and tilts to just keep him in the corner, but just great knowledge, but yeah. For sure. I definitely think it's also a Zelda player habit, just to kind of call it out that we want to jump back in and kick you. We want to punish you for that, especially because kick is so strong. And especially on Smashville, we saw Kloon's DI a little bit earlier, not to call that out. That back air, if that successful full hop over would have worked, that may have actually been the stock, especially with full range Zelda. I love this stage for both characters here, but especially Zelda, you can do a lot of safe hiding underneath that platform, especially versus Bite. But once again, I do think Silverus needs to watch out for some of these like landing bites here. It's so good. It's actually command grab. Yeah, and I'm honestly really scared giving Kloon like a stage with a lot of platforms. While we sh he showed that game too, like even while he was kind of like warming up the Wario a little bit, yeah. he has the combos now and he, he understands that he can extend. But Silver is doing a good job showing why you think this is a really yeah. good stage. And Forward Smash covering the end of the Phantom. Super yeah. smart. Yeah, hey, he hasn't done that once this set. It's so important to know how to play against Zelda's projectiles because they all work as a game. Not a lot of people know, but like Zelda's Phantom actually appears in seven stages. Some of them have more armor than the other. I love the run-up grab too by Silverus trying to mix him up, but unfortunately Kloon going to be able to start getting the strings that they need at this point. Yeah, a quick 70% for Kloon is going to be probably what he needs to get back into this one because that was a very early stock lead for Silverus. Yep. And able to bring it back. Yeah, jumping back on stage in that little jump zone yet again. All right, here we go. Silverius going to get the hitbox on the Ferrari's win to re-grab the ledge at this point. I love the down air opt for it, but of course, Kloon going to punish accordingly. And look at this. Silverius still at 100%. Will definitely not live a back air, but the rage is building, especially, and it makes it a lot easier when Zelda does have their opponent at, you know, around 80% because up smash with poor DI will make you know, KO, especially if you get it on a platform. Back air, wow. though, going to do the trick. And Silverus sitting comfortably two stocks, 37%. Kloon needs an answer. Yeah, this is looking insanely good for Silverus. Just doing a really good job at holding on to his percent, but also, like, holding on to his stocks. And, and I feel like Kloon as a player kind of directly gets countered by that because when you get Silverus at kill percent, he, you see Kloon looking a lot more for the back airs. You see him looking a lot more for the down tilt dash attack. It's like, you need to look for it, but you can't really, like, have it as a, as a main focus. For sure. Here we go, though. Silverus stuck on the ledge. Nice get up attack. I do feel like Kloon is bigger. Ooh, okay, gonna get the, I like Ooh. to call it the ricochet, the strong hit back air into the Phantom Sword into the forward air to meet Kloon up in the air. And that's gonna be that. Kloon did figure something out, just to kind of extend on my thought. Mm -hmm. I, Kloon did figure out that, you know, dropping down bite with the command grab, great option versus Zelda, but figured it out late, way too late. Let's talk about this play though. Back air into the full charge Phantom hit into Din's fire, going to set the Phantom up on the bottom. But hey, I can also cover the top. I don't need to be standing by Phantom the entire time. 
Zelda, you know, with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character, her and her <laughs> stand, they cover way too much space on their own. And that's going to be a 2-1 for Silverus. Great, great set. Yeah. Great Zelda play. I love it. Very, very phenomenal. He's been performing really well the past couple of weeks, just been putting in a lot of work. And it's starting to show, like, I, I, the Displaced Phantom stuff that you talked about makes a lot of sense, actually, because I yep. used to very... Uh, we, me and him pl have played a couple of times, and, and a big problem for him was just dealing with Joker Gun because you yeah. know, he can't reflect it. But mm -hmm. Displaced Phantom, very, very difficult to deal with. Very true, very true. I do think that Yoshi and Wario both win these matches, like those matchups in particular. Mm -hmm. It's just very interesting, once again, to kind of like see a Zelda overcome that when, um, especially things like Yoshi up Bear, uh, Wario Bite especially is such a pain. But, of course, we love good Zelda play. Yeah. Love